I may have complicated my own life. Some time ago I created a very simple but relatively powerful form in SharePoint basically when we wanted to update an element of a list on our CMO SharePoint we will have a completely customized form and that way we could trigger in the backend different entries. The problem is that right now when we ask people to provide feedback they ask me if we can send them the link to the form and specifically the link to the specific element they have to provide feedback on. And the form, as I was saying, is completely customized. So I cannot send them the link for the specific element unless I do some trickery on Power Automate. So let me show you how I did it. Okay, I bring you a rather complex solution, but I think we will learn quite many things here. The first one is that it's rather complex because of me. And why is that? We have this change management SharePoint and basically we, we use this SharePoint to manage all the changes on projects, processes or any other thing that we have in the organization. And one of the things that I was requested is that we wanted to change some of the things on the forms that we use to populate the list that we have in the SharePoint. So this was done some time ago and I have a video for that showing you how we did it. But if I show you how it looks, we can create a new change request and this form that you see here that has several sections, this is a Power Apps. And this is awesome because it allows me to customize everything to make some fields completely auto-populate themselves, to trigger flows behind from here and without having to go back to Power Automate and many other things. But what I've been requested lately makes this a little bit of a pain. So what I've been requested is to send an email every time we need people to provide feedback on a new change, especially the changes that are on status submitted. Now, the way we do this, we have a Power Automate flow that triggers an email and I just can show you here, I select any element on the list. I don't need to select the one that it submitted. It's just a way to trigger the Power Automate. I come to the automations and there's this one that just popped up that says request, request feedback from submitted changes. Now this will send an email to all the people on the organization that might need to provide feedback on those uh, change requests. On those emails, I usually put a table with the link to the change that they need to provide feedback. And what they requested is to also provide them with a link to the feedback request for that specific element. And let me show you how that looks. We come here to the change feedback and we see that they are all grouped already by specific changes. What they want is that on the emails I send them a link that basically will tell them hey this is the link to provide feedback for this change. Not to provide feedback overall, for that they will just come here and provide a new feedback and they will select their change that they want to provide feedback and fill it. This is also a Power Automation, uh, Power App. But what they want is an email with the link to the specific change that they want to provide feedback on. It sounds simple, it's not so simple. Let me show you how those emails look. These are the emails. Basically, you get hi team, blah, blah, blah. And these are all the changes we have discussed on the last meeting and all the changes that were submitted. Now, they get the link to the change where they can see the specific information on the change, but they cannot change anything. They can only see the information. Sorry for so many change, change, change. Uh, they only see the information and the details that they can have from that specific uh, request for change. If it's filled, if it's empty, like this field, they will not see anything. And then, then they're gonna get a link to comment on that specific change. They're going to be able to provide feedback for that specific change. And you see, change one is already selected here and they can 
fill this and submit the feedback. Let me show you how this works on the backend because it's not as simple as another Power Automate or Power Apps uh, app. In order to make this work, we need two things. We first need an automation to send those emails and in that automation we will need to send the link to those specific items but we also need that the form that we create to provide feedback can create new uh, entries based on an already existing entry so what we're going let me show you first the form and then we go to the power automate which is probably the most complex part if we come here to integrate and the power apps we go to the custom forms okay you can see there's not much to it it's quite simple the only specific change is this submit feedback button what it actually does is not submit the feedback but it rather creates a new entry that has some fields that are exactly the same as the ones on the previous one so what we do is that when this gets triggered from the link in the email we will trigger it linked to a specific change and for that we first need to create the entry you'll understand it better when we see the power up to it let me show you what i mean on this button on the button what we have is on select this simple formula what we want is a patch this patch will create a new entry based on the one that we have selected currently for that we create nothing super weird it's basically default values and updated with the values that you see right now on screen as the values that we see on screen are the ones that we had previously selected on the link therefore we will not need to select the change that we want to be specific about let me explain it in power automate because once you understand that this is just a formula here the power automate bar is probably the most complex part we have here this uh, automation that it's called request feedback from submitted changes the first part this trigger that it actually says manual but it's not manual it's the one that will be triggered when we select an element on the list for the change request let me show you how that look we saw it before but just as a reminder if we come to the change request list and we select one of the elements we go to the automate part and it will pop up here this will not pop up if we have two elements selected you are not even allowed to click on them or if you don't have any it will also not be there okay so we always need to have one element of the list selected we just select where the SharePoint list is and what's the name of the list then we create two variables these two variables are the URL that we will use on the links that we'll have on the email and that URL will point to the information of the change one of them and to the one to provide feedback of that specific change these URLs I'll show you how to find them you need to remove the end of them you see that they start with HTTP normal and then you need to remove the end of them how do you find this URL because it's a little bit tricky when you go to select one of the elements and then you edit that element there's this copy link here if you copy this link and I'll show you this is a completely randomized URL if I copy this and I go to a new page and I paste it you can see it here it's completely random probably there's a logic behind but it's not quite useful for us now you can see the URL just changed we still have the same thing that we had before but the URL changed and this is the key part the ID it's telling us which element of the list and this is telling us which page of the Power Automate app, Power App app we have displayed so we want to copy this link not the one that comes from here so for that we need to open first open it in a new page and then copy the one we have here we'll do the same with the other form and as i was telling you we will remove the end of both of them 
So we have the last part is the ID equal whatever. We don't need to worry about the page is being shown because you can on the app directly you can select which is the page that is going to be displayed all the time at the beginning once it's triggered. So that's not a worry for us. Now, once we have this, the next step is to get all the items that we have on the feedback list. Sorry, all the items that we have on the change request list. Now, we want to select all the items that had the specific status that we wanted. In your case, that made it fair. And what I'm going to do is on another list, the one where we provide the feedback, create as many entries, empty entries, but with that specific element from the previous list selected. For that, it is important that the list that you're going to create the feedback on has one column. In this case, we call it change request name that it's linked to the previous one. It's a lookup column. It's quite simple to create. With that lookup, lookup column, what we do is apply to each of the elements of the first list, create as many items based on the elements we have selected from the first list. So this will create as if we have 10 new submitted projects, this will create 10 new requests for feedback, one for each specific project. And how do we do the one for each specific project? We just come here and on the change request name ID, we input the ID of the current element. It's important to do the current element because if you come here and you try to do it automatically, you will not find it. All of these don't work. You need to come here with a fix item and put the ID. Sorry. This is the formula you're looking for. This is the ID of the current item. I'm going to close it because it's already there. So right now, until here, until this part here, okay, what we have done is for each new element on our change request list, for each new element with the submit status, we want to create a new element on another list that it's the one we're going to use to provide the feedback. Okay, done that, what we're going to do is get items of the change feedback. And why we want to get the items? Because right now what we're going to do is get the items that we have created on the feedback list and get those that only have the change request, that the rest of the information is empty. For that, we first need to get all the items of that list, including new ones, and then create row select where we're going to do the filtering. This filtering will filter the body of the get items. So from the list of the feedback, and we will basically look for those that are completely empty on a specific row. If we know that the feedback owner will be empty yes or yes when it's created this way, we got we grab that. Just pick up a column that you know will be empty. If you basically decide, <clears throat> if you use this formula, it will tell you true or false, if it's empty or not empty, and that's our criteria to filter. It's equal to true, so basically give me only the rows that have that column empty. Now, we use number of rows, especially to make sure that everything runs smoothly. It's not necessary but it's as simple as selecting the length of the previous output. And then we need to compose the new URLs and we want to compute to compose a URL for the change and we want to compose a URL for the feedback. Remember, we have two forms. We need two different URLs and we have multiple changes. So we need two links for two forms for each specific item that we're going to create. For that we create two different compose and what we do in these ones is concatenate. What we're going to concatenate is the variables that we have created at the beginning with the current item ID. We do the same on the second one. The variable it's different because it's a different URL and the change request 
name ID. This is the name of the column that looks on the feedback uh, table, on the feedback list, looks into the change request list. Now, once we have that, we create an HTML table. This HTML table, it's basically the table that we see on the emails, this table here. And we'll tell on this list, on this HTML table, where we're going to tell it's where are the headers and which fields we want to use uh, for those columns. So we use the concatenate of the previous ones. And you'll see here that there's a little change where we basically use this reference and this and then inside of it we concatenate again the previous part what does this mean this compose of the URLs are just for us to know that we did it correctly that we're able to compose it the way we want to compose it now when I was creating the HTML tables you don't need to create those to compose but it's important if you have any errors that you have them. You can compose them directly here and you will need to add this part for the href. This is basically all your HTML code that you need to concat here. You'll do the same for the other one. It changes, depends on the link. It's basically the same. Look at it, take your time, pause the video, see the formula. Then here I just added the UTC now because this is a test. You could pick any field that comes from the from the feedback that you have. And on the change, uh, this is just uh, compose of the change request. The next step is style the table. And this is important because otherwise it's going to look super ugly. You can copy the code that I have here. It's quite simple. It's one of the most simple ones I have found. You can find many of them online. If you look for CSS code for HTML table, you'll have plenty of them. CSS code for HTML tables. Okay, with this, we now have created a table that will have the link to the change, the change name, the due date, and the link to provide feedback for that specific change. Now, all we need to do is send the email. Hi team, this is what we talk, and we use this. And this is important. We cannot forget this part because it will not work. This, what it does is all the concatenation that we have done previously, here, all of this, and all of this, it substitutes all the HTML, with exactly what we want to see on screen. So we will replace and please copy all of this. Okay, and important is this part here. This is the part that can change on your formula. The rest you copy exactly the same way. You copy it exactly the same way. These outputs of a styled table, this is basically the output of this previous one. And that's it. A little bit complex. Check the video multiple times. There's a lot of information, but this is quite powerful. I hope that was useful.